have a picture of some of my Elsevier colleagues right here. Some of them are in the room as well. So there's a lot of stuff to do, right? There's a huge amount of stuff that good quality engineers do. And how do you make sure that you cover all of those things in every team? So I'm going to come back to that after the anti-patterns bit. So the anti-patterns that I've come across, and they may be exceptions to all of these things. So you may have a team where you have this set up and it completely works for you. It may well work. For me, there are better ways to do it than these ways. So I'm just going to call some of them out. So, so having no quality engineers at all. So one of the things, there seemed to be a shift a couple of years ago to um, teams who decided that testers weren't needed anymore. We can just get developers to do everything. And a lot of that's around thinking about testing as just automated testing. So you could do that, but what about all of those other things that a good quality engineer does? And what about the broad skills that a quality engineer has across many different teams and many different services where the developer will have the very deep view of what they're working on? <coughs> so having quality engineers that are not embedded in the teams, having them as a separate group, whether it's onshore, offshore, different office, but having it as a separate thing. Having a centralized test team where that team takes on things like regression testing. So quite a few companies still do that. I think that takes away the responsibility from looking after the quality within those individual squads. So hiring quality engineers into those embedded teams, but without considering the holistic view. So I'm going to talk more about that shortly as well. Hiring only developer and tests. Uh,